we are going to take a few minutes and show you how Heritage Collector will allow you to add and share photos with the new family search. So if you have an account, uh, you're going to log into that. If you don't have one, you ought to get one. They're free. And it's really pretty neat because then you can go and see what other people have collected in the way of, of genealogy for your family. And so if this was full screen, you'd see that I have some pictures of me and my dad that I've already put up here when I was testing. And so uh, if you're back a screen, you know, you're going to see, let's see if I dare do this. This is what you're going to see full screen. And of course, I'm logged in. And I come down, and I think I picked on uh, photos. Let's see if I can just jump back in. There we go. So when I go into my part of the family tree, and I see my dad's uh, name listed on the pedigree chart, then I click that name, and then I come into the photo section. Then you're going to need to click this right here. When you put photos on here, they do become public domain. And that really has to be that way, because other people can share the photos that you've put up, too. And if you want to read more, there's a, a uh, whole section on guidelines as to what Family Search deems is appropriate, what they will and what will not accept. And if it's not, if you can't assure them that it's in public domain, they don't want you to upload them. So we're not stealing anything, we're sharing, which is the whole purpose of Family Search, is to share information and photos. So let's go back now. And so I've got. Heritage Collector shrunk down on this half of my screen, and I've got Family Search on this half. Uh, and I clicked on this button over here, which brought me up to this screen. Drag and drop, or click to add family photos here. And they really want you to use JPEGs and PNGs because they're smaller versus a TIFF, which is going to be huge. Because if you think about Family Search, they're going to end up with millions and billions of photos, and so they've got to control the size of their database best they can. Okay, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to search Edward, because that's my dad's name. So we're going to go into the collections that I have for my dad. And here's some right here. So let's say I want to share a picture of this picture of my dad when he was a probably a teenager here. So you left click it once and you see it highlighted. We could do more than one, but I only want to do one. So I've selected it, and then down here it says drag resources to family search or Windows Explorer. So I click on this part of the screen. I come over here and you see it turn green. That means you have made it. That's the green light. If I let go of my left mouse button, that picture would be in there. So I'm going to come back over here so it would appear down here. Now, the really neat thing is let's I did this with this picture right here which is my grandmother who I never knew but when I went to her genealogical information in family search lo and behold one of my kind relatives had put this picture in there and I thought no that is cool I don't have that picture so what you do is you can do this you left click and you drag it right into heritage collector now you won't see that because it's it's actually over here now and so it's really a neat way to share. So you're going to put some information up there, some pictures. You can put some stories and soon video clips. But you can also then drag out some pictures that other people have put up there that you don't have. So I just think it's the neatest thing. And I, like I say, it's going to be interesting to see some of the pictures that appear in there that I've never seen. And some of the people I'll probably never be able to meet. They probably live somewhere else in the world. Uh, we have relatives in Denmark and Norway and South America and so on. So it might be kind of interesting to see what they have. Thanks for coming to our webinar. You can also follow us on Facebook for our latest tips and information. Uh, visit our webpage where we have a listing of webinars we will be presenting in the future. And also visit our newsletter page where you'll find lots of tips and free information.